Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to create a video slider using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But before we dive into building the project, let me describe it for you. As you can see, we have the main video playing on the page, spanning the entire screen. Alongside, there is a heading indicating which video is currently playing. Below, you will find four smaller videos, each playing as well. Clicking on any of them, We'll switch the main video and also it will update the heading accordingly. Okay, so that's the way how our slider works. Before we begin building, please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming tutorials. Now let's get started. I have prepared here our working files index.html, style.css and app.js and the index.html file you can find the basic html document which includes a couple of different links we have links for our working files I mean files for CSS and JavaScript you can see here both links and also I have brought in here the link for phone awesome icons besides that we have here the folder called videos in which we store all the videos that we're going to use throughout this project. You can download the starter files from the link in the description. All right, so the project is already run in the browser and now I'm going to start to create the HTML markup. So I'm going to open section elements with the class name landing inside landing I'm going to open another div which is going to be slider and inside slider we need to create the slide itself so we need here div element with the class name slide in which I'm going to insert video tag so we need to specify here the path of the video file as I said we have the folder called videos in which I'm going to search for the first video, I mean video number one. And besides that, I'm going to add a couple of different attributes. The first one is autoplay. It means that it means that the video will be played automatically. Next we need loop. It means that the video will play infinitely. And also I'm going to add here muted, which means that the video will be muted and we won't hear any sound of the video okay so overall we need five videos i'm going to duplicate slide four times and change the names of the video files we need here video number two then video number three the next one is going to be video number four and video number five all right so that's it about the html markup let me zoom the code so here we have all five videos and now I'm going to start to write some CSS. First of all, I'm going to define a couple of different default styles. I'm going to select every element using an asterisk and I'm going to define margin and padding. Let's set both of them to zero. Also, we need box sizing to be border box. It means that the width and height of the element will include the padding and the border. Next, I'm going to define the font size of the HTML element. And I'm going to set it to 62.5%. I'm doing this because we're going to use RAM as the measurement unit throughout this project. By default, one RAM is equal to 16 pixels because the font size of the HTML element is equal to 16 pixels. I want to convert one RAM into 10 pixels and that's why we define the font size of the HTML equal to 62.5%. So in this case one RAM will be equal to 10 pixels. All right, after that I'm going to select landing and define width and height, let's set width to 100%. As for the height, I'm going to make it 100 viewport height it means that the height of the landing will be 100% of the 
viewport next I'm going to select slider and I'm going to define the width and height I'm going to use the same width and height for the slider so we can set width to inherit and then we need height with the same value so in this case the slider will inherit width and height from the parent element which is a landing all right after that let's go ahead and select slide and define its width and height the width is going to be 20 ram as for the height i'm going to make it 35 ram let's check the browser so here we have the videos right now they look pretty ugly so let's go ahead and continue i'm going to select video and i'm going to inherit with an height from this slide let's set with to inherit and then the height will be inherit as well so now as you can see the videos take up the width and height of the parent element which is slide next i'm going to define active slide i mean the main video which will be play on the entire screen so let's go ahead and add class active to the first slide then i'm going to select active with slide and i'm going to define width as 100 viewport width and then height is going to be 100 viewport height so in this case the active slide will take up 100 percent of the viewport as the width and 100 percent of the viewport as the height okay so here we have the first video which is much bigger than the rest of the slides next i'm going to define the position for the slide it's going to be absolute and after that i'm going to add to the active slide to position zero and left position zero okay after that i'm going to take care of the videos let's add here two properties the first one is going to be object fit cover and then we need object position it's going to be center so the first property i mean object fit specifies how the video should be resized to fit its container while preserving its aspect ratio so when we set it to cover the video is stretched or shrunk as necessary to completely cover the container while maintaining its aspect ratio as for the object position this property determines the position of the video within its container when the object fit property is set to cover in this case setting it to center means that the video will be centered within its container both horizontally and vertically all right let's check the browser so we have here the slide now it has kind of different shape so next thing that i'm going to do is to add some inline styling to the html elements i mean those four slides here so i'm going to add to all those four slides the style attribute in which i'm going to insert a custom css variable i with a specific value i mean we will have values from four to one and this variable will be used for styling purposes in a minute so as i said we need here variable i and i'm going to enter here some values we need four then three then two and one all right after that i'm going to select all the slides except the active one so i'm going to select slide followed by the not pseudo class and inside the parentheses i'm going to indicate class active so with this selector we are selecting all the slides except the active one i'm going to define top and left 
positions. So the two position is going to be calc. This is function, which makes some calculations. I'm going to insert here 100% minus 37 RAM. So this property positions the non-active slides at the bottom of their container, leaving a gap of 37 RAM from the bottom of the container. Next, we need left property. And again, I'm going to use calc function. And I'm going to insert here 100% minus variable i multiplied by 22 rem. So this line of code positions the non-active slides horizontally based on the value of the custom CSS variable. I mean this variable. As you can see, they have different values. The first slide has 4 then 3, then 2, then 1. So the slides are spaced out from each other by a distance of 22 rem. And their positions are calculated relative to the right edge of their container. Okay, so let's go ahead and check the browser. Actually, the videos should be placed down. We have maybe a little mistake. Actually, we need here space. Now let's check the browser. Okay, so now everything works fine. And the slides, I mean those small videos are placed correctly. After that, I'm going to decrease the opacity. Let's set it to 0.7. And also I'm going to set cursor to pointer. All right, so the opacity is changed and also we have here cursor pointer. Next I'm going to create hover effect. I mean once we hover over the slides we need to increase the opacity. I'm going to select slide with not pseudo class. Then we need here to exclude the active slide and I'm going to add here hover so on hover, I'm going to increase the opacity. Let's set it to 0.9. All right, so the hover fact works. Next, I'm going to take care of the play buttons. I mean those buttons here. So let's go to the VS code and select slide with before pseudo element. I'm going to define content. And in this case, I'm going to use font awesome icons. So as the content, we need to place backslash, then F, 0, 1, D. And then we need font family with the following value, font awesome, 6, 3. Okay, next I'm going to define the font size. Let's set it to 3 RAM. Then the color is going to be white. Also, I'm going to change the position. Let's make it absolute. Let's check the browser. So here we have the play buttons. I'm going to place them in the center of the slides. So I'm going to add here display grid. And then place items center those two properties allow us to center the content inside the element. So now as you can see the play buttons are placed inside the slide, I mean in the center of the slide. After that I'm going to make the slides rounded using border radius. Let's set it to one RAM and then I'm going to hide the play button from the main, I mean the active slide. Let's select active.slide followed by the before pseudo element. Let's set opacity to 0. And then we need border radius for the video as well because as you can see the corners are still sharp. So we need to make them rounded. 
right now the corners of the slide is rounded and we need the same thing for the video as well so I'm going to set border radius to inherit so as you can see now the corners of the slides are rounded besides that I'm going to decrease the brightness so let's use filter with the function brightness and the value is going to be 50% Okay, so now I think that we have much better result. Actually, the play buttons are no longer visible. Let's fix that problem using Z index property. We need to insert here Z index with some higher value, let's say five. So now the buttons are displayed back. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is to get rid of border radius from the main slide. If you take a look at the corners, you will see here the border radius, which doesn't look quite good. So I'm going to find active slide and insert here border radius with value zero. So now we no longer have here border radius. And also, I'm going to add here one more style. Let's select body elements and add to it overflow hidden in order to hide all outer parts from the page. All right, so now we need to take care of the headings of the slides. I'm going to add content to the HTML file. We need to insert H1 heading elements right after the videos let's add h1 with the classes slide heading and i'm going to insert here content the first one is going to be horses then we will have volcano the next one is going to be yacht then we have beach and the last one is going to be ocean. All right, so here we have the headings. I'm going to customize the headings. Let's go ahead and select slide heading. I'm going to set position to absolute. Then we need to position, it's going to be five RAM. Also define left position, let's set to five RAM as well. Then I'm going to change the font family. Let's use font called Lucida Sans. If you don't have this font, you can download it for free and use it. Next, I'm going to change the font size. And in this case, I'm going to use one of the functions called clamp. And I will explain it in a minute. The values will be 4 RAM, then 10. C, Q, I, and then we will have 15 RAM. Okay, so the clamp function is a CSS function used to set a value within a specified range. It takes three parameters, the minimum value, the preferred value, and the maximum value. So in our example, we have clamp function with 4 RAM, 10, C, Q, I, and 15 RAM. So the first value is a minimum font size. It ensures that the font size will be at least 4 RAM. Then we have 10 CQI. This is the preferred font size. And this unit is a part of container query length units. If you hadn't heard of them until now, container queries are similar to media queries. However, instead of being based upon the size of the user's viewport, these styles can be changed according to the size of one of the element's parent containers. Now, in the same way that viewport height and viewport width are relative to the size of the viewport, container query units are relative to the size of their container. So, CQI stands for container query in line, and by default, 1%, and by default, it equals to 1% of the containers in line size. In our case, we have here 10 CQI. It means that we have 10% 
of the containers in line size. Okay, so the third value is 15 RAM and this is the maximum font size. It ensures that the font size will not exceed 15 RAM. So the clamp function in this context sets the font size to be at least 4 RAM, preferably 10 CQI, I mean the 10% of the containers in line size, but no larger than 15 RAM. Actually, we need here comma. So the browser will choose a font size within this range based on the available space and the preferred font size, ensuring readability while also adapting to different screen sizes. All right, so hopefully it is clear for you. Next, I'm going to add here text transform, uppercase, and also I'm going to set font weight to 300. All right, so I think that we need color for our font. Let's set color to RGBA value. It's going to be white color with opacity 0.431. All right, so that's it about the headings. It looks good. Next, I'm going to hide those headings. So for that, I'm going to select slide. Then we need not to the class. And I'm going to exclude class active. And after that, I'm going to select slide heading. Let's hide the headings using visibility hidden and opacity zero. So as you can see, the headings of those slides are hidden. Actually, let's add a little transition to this whole effect. I'm going to add to the slide transition all 0.5 seconds. All right, so now it's time to make our slider work. And for that, we have to use JavaScript. Let's go to the JavaScript file. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to select all elements with the class slide and convert them into an array using the spread operator. So I'm going to create a variable, let's call it slides. And then we need array with spread operator, we need three dots. And now I'm going to select slides using query selector all method. And I'm going to specify here the class name slide. Actually, we need here parentheses and then dot slide. Next, we have to iterate over each slide element in the array using for each method. And also we need to attach a click event listener to it. So let's use for each method. And then I'm going to insert here callback function with the parameter slide. So as I said, we have to attach an event listener to each slide in the array. So we need here slide dot add event listener. And we have to specify here the event type It's going to be click. Then we need callback function, which will be executed once we click the slide. So now we have to select the currently active slide by querying for an element with both classes slide and active. So I'm going to create a new variable. Let's call it active slide. It should be equal to document.querySelector. And I'm going to insert here both classes. I mean slide followed by the active. Next, we need to create another variable. And I'm going to call it active slide props. Let's insert here the code and then I will explain what this code means. So I'm going to use one of the methods called object.assign and inside the parentheses I'm going to insert the following. We need active slide dot get bounding client rect function. So this line calculates the position and dimensions of the active slide using the 
get bounding client wrapped method and then creates a copy of those properties using object.assign. So again, object.assign method is used to copy the values of all innumerable own properties from one or more source objects to a target object. In this case, it is used to copy the properties of the result of active slide.get bounding client rect into a new object. On the other hand, get bounding client rect returns the size of an element and its position relative to the viewport. It returns a DOM rect object containing properties like width, height, top, left, bottom, and right. So I can show you in the console. Let's insert here active slide props. Let's go to the browser, inspect the page, switch to the console tab. So as you can see, we have here DOM rect object and it contains properties like width, height, top, left, bottom and right properties. So in summary, this line of code calculates and copies the properties such as width, height, position of the currently active slide element into a new object named active slide props. Okay, next we have to calculate the position and dimensions of the clicked slide. So we need new variable and it's going to be slide props. It should be equal to slide dot get bounding client rect. So again, this variable stores the position and dimensions of the click slide. If we run this variable into console, let's check the console tab. So as you can see, we have here two DOM rect objects. If I click any of the slides and check the result, you will find here the position and dimensions of the clicked slide. All right, let's get rid of those two lines. So now we have to set the CSS properties of the currently active slide to match the properties of the clicked slide. This effectively moves and resizes the active slide to the position and size of the clicked slide. So I'm going to insert here active slide dot style dot CSS text equal to template strings and now we need to define width height top and left properties the width is going to be slide props dot width and we have to add here pixels then we need to define height it's going to be again slide props dot height we need pixels then in the same way we need to position it's going to be slide props dot top pixels and then finally we need left position it's going to be slide props dot left we need here pixels okay so after that we have to set the css properties of the clicked slide to match the properties of the previously active slide so i'm going to duplicate this code and i'm going to insert here slide dot style dot css text and then instead of slide props we need here active slide props so let's copy this variable and insert it here okay so i think everything is correct next we have to remove the active class from the previously active slide so we need here active slide dot class list 
dot remove and I'm going to insert here class active and after that we have to add the active class to the clicked slide marking it as the new active slide so we need here slide dot class list dot add and we need here act okay let's go to the browser and click the slides so as you can see they are switching but we have here little problem once we click then it ends up behind the active slide so we need to fix that problem using the index property we need to find here active slide let's insert here the index equal to 5 and then I'm going to insert here the index property with higher value 10 so now if we click then you will see that the problem is fixed next we have to change the background color of the slider I'm going to set background to 1 F3 3 4 6 so now we have much better result and after that I'm going to add a couple of different transitions to make the effect of the slider much more better and nicer so I'm going to get rid of this transition from here and then I'm going to insert here transition with the following values we need top 0.5 seconds then we need left position 0.5 seconds next we have width with one second then height one second and opacity 0.5 seconds okay after that I'm going to add again transition to this code here let's use transition we need here top one second then left one second width 0.5 second then height 0.5 second and opacity 0.5 second okay let's check the browser so now we have much better result let's add a couple of transitions again now we need transition for slight heading it's going to be opacity one second point five seconds and then visibility one second point five second and also we need to transition here as well let's add here opacity point three second and visibility point three second okay let's add two more transitions to before pseudo element it's going to be opacity one second and then we need transition opacity 0.5 second okay let's go to the browser so now as you can see everything works perfectly so we can say that we have finished building the project the only thing that we have to do is to make it responsive for different screen sizes when I was working on this project specifically on the responsive part I encountered something strange with Google Chrome let's go to the finished version and inspect the page so I'm going to switch the responsive mode so if I make the screen smaller you can see here those white spaces 
I don't know the reason, the project is definitely responsive and adaptable to all different screen sizes, but for some reason Google Chrome doesn't work properly. Maybe it's because we are using videos here, but honestly, I don't know. So I've decided to use Mozilla Firefox instead of Google Chrome. I'm gonna close this tab and open Mozilla Firefox. So here we have the Mozilla Firefox and the responsive mode is switched on. So I'm going to find the breakpoint on which we have to make some changes. So the first breakpoint is going to be, I'm going to select the this screen size here. Actually, let's select tablet mode. So I'm going to define CSS media query with max width of 1200 pixels. I'm going to select slide and set width to 10 RAM. As for the height, it's going to be 15 RAM. Then I'm going to select slide not with active class. And I'm going to define top end left properties. Actually, I'm going to copy the code from here. We need those two properties. Let's insert them here. So I'm going to make this value 17 RAM. As for the 22 RAM, I'm going to make it 12 RAM. Let's refresh the page. Okay, so I think it looks good. Next, I'm going to check the mobile screen. So I'm going to create the next breakpoint. Let's set max width to 520 pixels. I'm going to decrease the font size of the HTML element. Let's make it 45%. Okay, so that's it. The project is responsive to different screen sizes. We have here videos with very good quality. That's why we have here some glitches. So don't worry about it. The main thing is that the project is responsive and actually we can say that the project is finished. Hopefully it was interesting and you learned some new stuff. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on coming tutorials. See you in the next video.